How to fine-tune and deploy the multimodal lava model. Hi, I'm Carter. I'm a founding engineer at Brev.dev, and you might know me as Baxate, and in today's video, I'll be explaining exactly how to do that. Image features a man sitting on a grassy hill overlooking a beautiful view, which adds to the peaceful atmosphere of the scene. It's very fluffy, and this time, it's gonna say man, bridge, city. So we taught the model to go from this to this. So if you follow the link in the description, I encourage you to follow along with me so that you'll be able to fine tune and deploy your own version of the Lava model for this particular use case. This is one of the many Jupyter notebooks that we have on our platform, uh, explaining step by step on how to do, for example, a fine tuning and training process. This guide is meant to be for both beginners, intermediates, and experts. I'm sure you can find value if, if you're in any one of those categories. So I encourage you once again to follow along on Brev.dev. The link in the description will take you exactly to the link I'm on right now. And if you have not yet made a Brev account, then you will have to, you'll see a get started badge here instead of a deploy now. But because I'm already logged in, all you have to do is click deploy now. And what we're actually doing is we're going behind the scenes and to many of our cloud providers and we're provisioning and installing all the necessary software to be able to run the Lava model and to actually be able to fine tune it as well. So as you can see, we're deploying the GPU here. It's an L4, eight GPUs and 96 CPUs. This is a relatively large GPU and that's just because this is a fairly big model that we wanna actually fine tune on. As you can see, we've deployed the GPU and now we're installing the relevant software setup so that it's ready to run. So. Before we get into that, I'll explain a little bit more about this notebook. So as I mentioned, this notebook is on how to fine tune the Lava model. The Lava model is a multimodal model, meaning that it can understand both images and text. And generally how the Lava model is used is that you present it with an image and then it'll give you a text response, either describing that image or some other use case for understanding what's actually happening in the image itself. It's uh, actually from a research paper, which we link to here, it relies on the pre-trained clip visual encoder, which essentially will help map images into the same latent space as text itself, which is a fancy way of saying that the computers can understand what's in the image in the same dimension space as what the actual text is in. And so in this particular notebook, what we're actually gonna be doing is we're gonna be fine tuning the Lava model to essentially be used in some kind of classification app. So traditionally, and we'll be able to do a demo at the end, but traditionally when you plug in an image into the Lava model, which is open source as is, it'll create a very verbose explanation of what is actually in the image. But let's say you wanted to create an application to where you were gonna create tags for your, your photo sharing app, or you're creating a YouTube video and you have a thumbnail and you want it to be able to tell you what's in the thumbnail. So I'll be walking through a few demos at the end, but in the meantime, I'm gonna wait for a few more minutes here for it to set up the instance to be ready for us to actually start opening this notebook on the, the very powerful NVIDIA GPU so that we can actually run through the notebook on the powerful compute. Alrighty, as you can see, that was only a couple minutes and now we have our notebook ready to view. So as soon as I click access notebook, what it'll actually do is it'll take me to the Jupyter Lab notebook that is now running on that L4 GPU that we provisioned for you. So here we're in our Jupyter notebook workspace and we have the same notebook that we were viewing here and we're just gonna go through the actual cells and I'll explain a little bit about what's actually happening here. Table of contents here, we'll need to be doing some uh, data pre-processing, we'll need to actually install the model itself, but what's really nice about Brev is that we actually do a lot of the initial software setup for you. So things like Python, CUDA, and relevant drivers are already installed and you, we can actually just begin running the cells directly. First, we have to do data pre-processing. Now, Lava requires a very particular type of format for its data sets in order to be fine-tuned. And so we need to actually take our data set that we've sourced and put it into the format that Lava understands. Uh, optionally, you can create your own data set by using something like GPT-4. This will show you exactly how to do that. We are not gonna be walking through that in, in this video, but it is on the notebook. So again, if you're following along and you wanna create your own data set to fine-tune this model on, then you can do that. So now we just need to start walking through the cells and actually installing the software that's relevant for running this notebook. 
All right, now we've installed some of the relevant libraries that we need and we'll move on to the next one. Now these functions are to process the data so that Lava can understand it, like I mentioned before. And then here's actually where we grab the data sets that we'll be using as part of this guide. And so all you have to do is click run and you'll notice that there's a little bit of a star. That star means that the code is actually executing and you can see some of the logs below to explain what it's actually doing in that time. But once the star turns back into a number, that's how you know the cell is done running, which means you can move on to the next step. To explain a little bit about what fine tuning actually is, you can think about it as teaching your model the sort of behavior or the outputs that you want it to do. I'll be able to compare the models, the ones that we've actually fine tuned compared to the default open source model that you can download yourself. So you can see how you can kind of teach it towards the functionality that you actually want. And that's what this demo is ultimately trying to show you how to do. That's what fine tuning is. But the Lava model itself is incredibly powerful because it again is multimodal. So it can understand images and produce text. As you'll notice, we have two different types of data sets. We have the training set and the test set. This is very common to split up your data sets into usually it's around an 80-20 split where you're actually teaching the model how you want it to look but then you want to actually test it against some other set of data because you don't want to overfit the model. If we fine tuned it and tuned all the parameters to just fit our training data set then you might actually have some undesired behavior because it directly maps too closely to the data set and then it isn't indicative of maybe what like a real world scenario would be which is why you add the uh, the test data set as well to validate that the it doesn't overfit the model. All right, as you can see, now that this has turned into a number, we know that the cell has completed and we've actually installed our data sets. And if you actually notice on the left here, we now have the data set directory that's again on our instance that we provisioned for you, the very powerful L4. Now we need to move to onto the next cell and actually clone the open sourced Lava model that we will actually be fine tuning. So these models have a ton of weights, or you can think about them like variables to an equation that we actually need to train for our particular use case. And so that's what we'll be doing when we're actually fine tuning it. So now we have the Lava directory, which actually has the model with all of its weights. And part of why we need a fairly powerful GPU is such that we can actually fit not only the entire model, but into memory so that we can actually start tweaking all of those weights in parallel. And we'll be leveraging a tool called Deep Speed, which I'll speak about in a second once the cell finishes. Again, this notebook guide is one of our many guides that we have on Brev.dev, where we walk you through other use cases of machine learning, AI, and really anything that you can do with a GPU. And so I highly suggest you check some of those out if you're interested in stuff in content like this. Uh, as we install the Lava model here, you'll notice that we have to install a bunch of other libraries that are relevant for that. But because the notebook is written in such a way that it's supposed to work out the box, you can just run through the cells directly and it should work for you identically if you're following along with me. Now that we've installed Lava, we're going to move on to the deep speed portion, which we actually have to install. Now, as I run these cells, I'll explain a little bit about deep speed, which is essentially it's an optimization library designed by Microsoft to enhance the training speed and scalability of large scale AI models. So we can actually distribute the training among the many GPU cores that the powerful L4 has, which means that we can actually do a fine tuning job very, very quickly compared to if you were to say, try and run it on your own machine where you probably don't have enough memory. And even if you did, it would take a very, very long time. But this guide end to end should take you around 30 minutes. If you wanna learn more about deep speed and how it performs the magic, then you can check out this article here, which explains a little bit more about how it works and why we used it in this guide. The next thing we're gonna install is weights and biases. Weights and biases is very industry standard. It's an ML ops tool to monitor and evaluate your training jobs. So you can th see things like your GPU efficiency, uh, your loss rate and a lot of metrics that are really good to explain how well you are you overfitting the model are you underfitting it do you need a bigger or smaller gpu these are the things that weights and biases can show you and so for example in the guide we can see this particular training job if this was run again uh, this is what we would expect our graphs to kind of look like for example the training loss we can see it going down that means that we're getting closer and closer to what we want based on all the test data that we actually provided it along with the gpu utilization metric so i'm going to install and log into my weights and biases account now. So now we've done all the setup. We're actually ready to begin fine tuning. And so if, you're, if you've done fine tuning before, many of these parameters will be familiar to you. But if you haven't, I suggest that you leave a lot of them the same. These are the type of things where you can adjust your learning rates or your total number of epochs and many other variables to decide how you want to actually fine tune or train this model. In this particular case, I'm actually going to increase the number of epochs to five because one is 
not going to get us close enough to how we want for our particular data set. It's not necessarily that just adding more epochs is better or a higher learning rate is better, which is why, again, I suggest that you leave most of this standard. But as you can see, we're actually training this using deep speed, which will use the multiple cores of the GPU in parallel. So now I'm just going to click run and we'll actually be able to see the fine tuning start to happen. All right, so now what we're actually doing is we're fine tuning the model just by running this cell. Again, we're gonna do five epochs with all of these variables. And what this is doing is it's teaching the model, it's adjusting the weights to map towards more of the functionality that we want to get out of our lava model, which again is something that could, for example, classify what's in an image. Tell us in a little bit less detail, but more the nouns and the subjects so that we could use it in say like a computer vision type application. If you've never fine tuned before, this is incredibly popular because these big open source models straight out the box might not be the best use case for your particular application. And so by fine tuning it with your own data sets, you could actually create something that is particular to your use case that works really, really well. And this is a little bit different than say using API endpoints to something like a GPT-4 where you have no control over the underlying model or its, its weights or anything because all of that is housed somewhere else and they're also notoriously more expensive than if you have your own in-house model, which again could be a fine-tuned of an open source model. Now the fine tuning itself will probably take about 10 minutes, but again, that is way shorter than if you were to try and run it on a less powerful machine. And because Brev offers you the GPU straight out the box, you don't have to worry about any of that. While we're waiting on this fine tuning job to finish, if this is your first Brev video, or if you've been following for a while, please like, comment, and subscribe. Maybe add a comment about what Jupyter Notebooks you would like to see guides on. And as far as machine learning is concerned. And please subscribe as this is one of the avenues where we find a lot of our users and it means a lot to us. If you aren't already, I highly suggest you join our Discord. We're very interactive in there and we like to interface with our users and build out not only the guides, but also the features that our users actually want. So I highly suggest you check that out. Now at this point, I should mention that we're actually using LoRa or low rank adaptation, which means that instead of tuning and training every single model weight, we're actually doing only about 12%. But what a lot of people have found is that by just tweaking those roughly 12% of the total number of parameters, you can actually fine tune or get a model that is closer to the functionality that you actually want without having to tune every single parameter because many models will have 8 billion parameters and instead of fine tuning every single one, just by doing 12% of them, you can actually get a lot closer to the functionality you want. And so that's what we're using here. And so then in the next cell, which I'm going a little bit ahead of myself here, what we'll actually do is we'll essentially replace the weights from the open source model with the new ones that we've trained throughout this fine tuning process. And so it's still fine tuning right now. And you can see, again, it's tweaking the learning rate. It's showing us what epoch we're in. It actually provides checkpoints as well. So you can stop and come back to it. And after this is done, I'll go check the weights and biases run, which is what we installed. And we can go look at this run to see our graphs. And they look should look somewhat similar to this. If you're coming here from my social media accounts, Backsate, leave a comment down below saying Backsate sent you. I'd be curious to see how many of you came over. Now, as you can see, the loss is going down as we train, which means we're getting closer to matching the functionality of the test data set that we actually provided or the data set that we wanted the model to be trained on. And I just went back to the top of the cell and as you can see, we're done running this cell, which means our fine tuning job has completed. So I'm actually gonna go check the weights and biases run so we can go look at those graphs similar to the ones that were given as an example below. I can view that here. So these are the graphs that we showed below and so there's many different types of graphs they provide. But as you can see, the loss is going down over time, which means we were getting closer again to what we want the model to actually function, function like. Additionally, we can see things like our GPU power usage, the memory allocated, etc. Now back to the notebook. Again, what we're now gonna do is take the learned weights that we have and merge them with the model so that we can actually use that instead of the open sourced ones. So by running this cell, that's what this does. Now that that's done, you'll see that we actually have a new directory here with the Lava fine-tuned model. This is actually now the directory where our model lives. We're done. And so at this point, you could take the model and actually try and go run it in your own application, but we actually provide a demo here. So this is my favorite part of this particular guide. And most of our guides will have a demo portion towards the end. So we just have to install this. And then all you have to do is download the model runner and then it'll actually give you a Gradio link, which is a web UI to where you can actually play with the model yourself and you can actually even share the link with your friends once you've done this and you'd be able to show, they'd be able to play around with it as well. Now that that cell's done, all you have to do is look for this public URL right here and I'll click this 
and we'll actually be able to select between the original lava model and then the ones that we actually fine tune. And so now we can actually see the result of all of our hard work and the fine tune job. So here we can select between the two different models. We have the open source one without any of the fine tuning that we've done and then the actual fine tuned one. As a reminder, we taught the model to give us a bit more of a succinct description of what's actually in the photo. We don't want fluffy language. And as you'll see when I give it this prompt, for example, I'm just gonna say, what do you see? This is a photo of me uh, in front of the San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge at Fort Mason. And it'll say, oh, the image features a man sitting on a grassy hill overlooking a beautiful view, like beautiful, right? It's very fluffy. Oh, which adds to the peaceful atmosphere of the scene. So if I were creating an application that I wanted to identify what's in the image, this is too much. And this is actually more of like a GPT type response if you were to go ask ChatGPT what's in this image. And so what we taught it to do is say, cut all the fluff and just give me directly what's in the image. So now I'm gonna switch to our model and I'm just gonna say, what do you see? And this time it's gonna say man, bridge, city, right? It's a lot more just directly to the point. And so this could actually be used in an application to maybe describe what's in the photo so that you could maybe put it into different categories. If you were creating a calorie tracking app or something, you could describe the food on the plate rather than saying, oh, this looks delicious. It might say turkey, chicken, etc. And again, you can share this link with anyone. And so that was the demo. So we taught the model to go from this to this. Now, Granted, this is a fairly particular use case, but that's what fine tuning is really capable of. And you can fine tune Lava for a number of different applications. You could teach it to even be more verbose, or you could teach it to only write things in adjectives and different things like that. That's what fine tuning is able to do. And so in this demo, in this guide, we actually fine tuned Lava, an open source model, all on Brev without ever having to leave your laptop. So if this guide was useful for you, I highly suggest you like, subscribe, comment, and if you want any particular other guides, please let us know because we really want to see them. This was a great notebook written by our head of ML AI, Ishan Danani, and he puts out great work. And if you aren't already, subscribe and join the Discord. Thank you guys so much for watching.